It was sleek, it was stealthy, and it was supposed to be the future of warfare in the skies. So why was one of the most advanced helicopters ever built, the RAH-66 Comanche, grounded before it could ever see combat? This is the story of how a revolutionary and futuristic machine never made it to the battlefield. To understand why the Comanche was developed, we need to go back to the 1980s, during the height of the Cold War. The U.S. Army requirement for a new scout helicopter, one that could detect and avoid enemy radar, carry out reconnaissance and, if necessary, attack targets. Something advanced enough to face the growing Soviet threat. Enter the RAH-66 Comanche, a joint project by Boeing and Sikorsky designed to replace aging smaller helicopters like the Hughes OH-6 and Bell OH-58 Kiowa. The military sought to develop the LHX, or Light Helicopter Experimental, a program to create a single dynamic system that could be adapted for both a small utility helicopter and gunship, similar to the original UH-1, Huey, and AH-1 Cobra designs. The rollout of the first Comanche aircraft occurred on May 25, 1995, and the first flight took place on January 4, 1996. Despite the challenges considering the unconventional nature of the aircraft design, the flight test program was generally successful. This was the result of the extensive detailed development program conducted before the first flight. There were no major incidents, and the basic aircraft requirements met or exceeded all operational objectives. According to its lead contractor, Boeing, the first deliveries were scheduled for 2006, with the Comanche program reaching full production by about 2010, and planned to produce 1,213 of these for the U.S. Army service. The helicopter is designated as an advanced armed reconnaissance and attack helicopter. It is lighter and smaller compared to the AH-64 Apaches. The basic configuration advantage of the Comanche was its ability to see without being seen, and was the first helicopter that could detect targets without being detected itself. This ability makes the helicopter a game-changer on the battlefield. It was built with radar-absorbent materials and a design that made it nearly invisible to enemy radar. If an enemy was looking for it, the Comanche would be gone before they even knew it was there. And it wasn't just stealthy. The Comanche featured sophisticated and advanced avionics, helmet-mounted displays, including navigation and detection systems, which would have enabled operations at night and in bad weather. Real-time data can be shared by the helicopter with other units, which can link up and communicate with other military assets on the battlefield, in particular locating and designating targets for attack helicopters, such as the AH-64 Apache, to strike. The Comanche could reach speeds of up to 200 knots, fast enough to evade threats and get in and out of combat zones before the enemy even knew what they hit on them. Comanche was equipped with a retractable 20mm three-barrel rotary cannon mounted under the chin. It could internally carry up to six AGM-114 Hellfire air-to-ground missiles or 12 AM-92 Stinger air-to-air -air missiles on a pair of retractable weapons pylons. Additionally, the Comanche could mount external stub wings to carry up to eight Hellfire or 16 Stinger missiles, though this would reduce the effectiveness of its stealth capabilities. The Comanche helicopter's design prioritized advanced composite materials over traditional metals. These composites, which included carbon fiber and other lightweight materials, served two critical purposes. They significantly reduced the aircraft's overall weight while simultaneously lowering production costs. The extensive use of these modern materials represented a major advancement in military helicopter construction, marking a departure from conventional manufacturing methods that relied heavily on metal components. As ambitious as the RAH-66 Comanche sound was, it faced a barrage of challenges and criticisms that would ultimately lead to its cancellation. The road to its creation was anything but smooth. By 2002, the expanding wars in Iraq and Afghanistan strained the Army's development budget. While still valuable, the Comanche's stealth capabilities became less critical in these new combat environments, making it harder to justify the program's high costs. In February 2004, the Pentagon announced the termination of the Comanche program and later determined the number of upgrades needed to be more survivable and capable on the battlefield. However, 
it was decided to redirect all the funding and upgrades to the existing helicopter fleet, especially to unmanned aerial vehicles or UAV, which could also perform the roles of a Comanche stealth helicopter. Before its cancellation in 2004, in mid-1999, the Government Accountability Office raised major concerns about the Comanche program, warning it would consume nearly two-thirds of the Army's aviation budget by the fiscal year of 2008 with a whooping price of $34 million for every single Comanche helicopter at that time of its development in the 90s, and per unit cost would have been significantly higher, reaching an estimated $58 to $60 million per helicopter. In addition, the Comanche's cancellation was influenced by the growing popularity of UAVs, or unmanned aerial vehicles, which were increasingly favored for both reconnaissance and deep strike missions behind enemy lines. The Comanche never took to the battlefield, but its groundbreaking design redefined military aviation, leaving a legacy of innovation that still shapes the skies today.